Hi everyone, welcome to Traveling Misnets. My name is Pia and I am so very happy that you're joining me here in Denmark today for a little chat about my yarn adventures. I am back in Denmark. I am back with Miss, which just makes me so, so happy. I am only here for a couple of days, but you know, every moment counts and I am enjoying myself. If I look a little bit tired, and I think I do, um, it's because I am. I am terribly jet lagged, which is usually not my thing. Um, usually I cope with the jet, jet lag quite easily, but this time, oh, the struggle is real. Let's just say that. But uh, this was my chance to actually sit down and chat with you. I didn't want to miss out on that. So I hope that you will bear with me looking a little bit tired. I do have somewhat of a knitting horror story to share. One of my suitcase didn't make it home. Obviously, it had to be the one with most of the knitting in it. It had to be the one with my two finished objects, all of my traveling needles. Fortunately, I have extra needles at home, but all of my traveling needles, most of my yarn. Yeah. I arrived here in Denmark on Wednesday. Today is Friday. It's still not here. I kept pushing uh, recording so that I would have a chance to show you my, my finished objects, but no. They assure me that they know where my suitcase is at, that it is way, making its way to me slowly but surely. I believe that, but I still kind of bummed that I can't show you. I finished my Eco123 beautiful t-shirt um, by Ankistrik. I have been working on it for almost a month, I think. I Last episode I told you I was struggling a little bit. I wasn't really happy with my yarn choice and I wasn't sure that I picked the right size. It is beautiful. The yarn bloomed as I blocked it. Uh, the size is perfect. The neckline is not as in the photos uh, from the pattern, but it's beautiful. I like it. I would love to wear it, but there you go. Next time, maybe. Please let's all keep our fingers crossed. I also finished a chain reaction top. It's a free pattern from the crochet blog OTH Crochet Nook. I made one earlier for myself and now I also made one for my granddaughter Isabella because she really loves these light airy netty tops and we are going on vacation together with her and her two younger brothers and her parents. So I thought I would just make a little top for her. I really hope it comes before we have to leave. Instead, I am wearing today one of the patterns that will be released uh, within the next couple of months. The 20 patterns from the book that, that didn't happen. This is my trellis. Um, let me see. I can, yep, I can go like this. My trellis is this oversized, cozy, soft, uh, quite airy sweater. It is knit with two strands of floof. Uh, for this one, I used some fluffy from A Knitter's World, which is, uh, is it baby alpaca and yak? I think um, maybe or possibly also some silk content, I think there is. It's very, very soft. 
I apologize for it being a little wrinkled. Uh, it has been stuffed into a project bag because I didn't think I would get the chance to wear it until the book came out. But there you go. Now I can wear it and I love it. It is, as you can see, very oversized, a little bit longer in back than in front. And then with these long ripped uh, sleeve cuffs to tie in some of all this oversized fluffy fabric. I call it trellis because of this pattern. It is uh, it, it's a very beautiful pattern. I really love this. Let me see if I can get the camera to actually focus. It is such a lovely pattern, beautiful texture, and it does remind me of uh, an espalier, um, a trellis, um, where you can like you, you place it against a house wall and you can grow your plants up on it. So yeah, there's definitely more trellises in my future. I am, uh, I am really tempted to try to knit it up in this brushed mohair from Gan Specialisten. That would definitely work, uh, and that would give me a quite a budget-friendly sweater, but still the same softness and and the same airiness so that's probably i would like to make one without sleeves uh if you just yeah just bound off when you separate uh body and sleeves and just a bind off i think that would be beautiful for the summer so that is definitely on my to knit list my impressively long to knit list but yeah definitely something that i want to try this pattern will be coming out June 1st. It has been tested and tech edited and all of that. So, uh, well, much like my cat number five, what I need to do to this is translate it. Uh, I need to make it look pretty, look like a pattern and not just a whole lot of raw text. And then I need to take some photos of it. And yeah, speaking of my cat number five, I showed you last time that I finished it. I also showed you that I had disregarded my own pattern. Um, the pattern clearly instructs that you, come on, focus now. There you go. Oh, we don't go. Uh, the pattern clearly instructs that you change to the contrasting color as you do the bind off, I disregarded that completely. I just bound out uh, off in the main color, but then I picked out my bind off. This is amazing. Let's see if it's easier when we look at, yeah, there you go. Look at that. Here you can really tell. I picked out the bind off and I bound off in the contrasting color. And I really like the look of that. I like the little pop of color at the edges. Also because it mirrors the pop of color up here at the folded over neckline. So I'm, I'm happy that I actually convinced myself to go back and do that. I do have one tip and that is also in the pattern. When you want to bind off in a contrasting color and you're doing ribbing, if you just change to the contrasting color, then all of your purl stitches are going to be two colored. All the purl bumps are going to look not nice. They're going to be two colors and I, I don't care for that look. So what I always do is I knit one round with the new color and then I bind out, uh, off. And that's what I did here. And that is, as I said, also what the pattern instructs you to do. So yeah. This one is also almost ready. Again, I need to spend some hours editing, uh, photographing it, translating it into English. As soon as that is done, it's gonna come out. My plan is to have the cat number five come out on May 20th 
And then, as I said, the trellis to come out on June 1st. Trellis, I think of as a summer sweater, uh, a summer piece, because it is airy as a fluffy summer cloud. And it, it this one you'd be able to get a lot of wear out of, uh, at least if you're in Denmark or in the northern parts of Italy, which is where I'm going to be spending my summer. The cat number five is much heavier, but still, there's going to be these colder days and colder summer nights where you still want to sit out and you don't want to bundle up in a jacket. Also, the cat number five is tied to our knit-a-thon, so of course I want it out before the knit-a-thon is just too far away. So uh, yeah, two finished objects two almost finished patterns. I have been on a roll this week. I also have two whips. Fortunately, my whips were both in my carry-on because I just couldn't make up my mind. I couldn't choose between them. I hate playing favorites with my yarns and with my whips. And they were both satisfying knits. So I decided to bring them both. Fortunately, it would have been terrible to lose a whip in a suitcase, right? And my little project bag from the McKinney Knittery is my perfect little cardigan. I am knitting this as part of a knit along that I am running, the PLC cow, where you can knit a perfect little cardigan you don't have to finish, you just have to cast on, have fun, share your photos on Instagram with the hashtag PLCKAL and you will enter to win a prize. Come June 1st, I am going to draw a prize for this very informal knit along. But yeah, I am at the point where I just separated for the sleeves, like only just. And I am still loving it. I am knitting this uh, one size smaller than I usually do, just because I like the idea of a more fitted cardigan. I have tried it on. As soon as I separated for the sleeve, I ran to the bathroom on the plane to try it on. And it is, it's working up beautifully. It is very, very colorful, but I don't know. I'm on a cardigan color kick these days. I knit this one, the perfect little cardigan, in a very red. I actually have the rest of it sitting back there. Now I am doing a green and I have shopped for some yarn for the next one. I'm going to show you that in a minute. First, I just want to talk about this yarn, which is a yarn that some of it I got at the McKinney Knittery. Some of it I had to order online because they didn't have enough up there. It is the Durarum Natura Ulysse base in the colorway Printemps. And yeah, I told this story before. I was looking for a green yarn, a like a very light, bright, almost obnoxious green. Uh, I found some colors off at the knittery where I was like, yeah, they, they could work. But then I saw this and I was like, this is my green. Look how cool toned it is. It really, this, this is the kind of color that I like. Um, not too much yellow in it, uh, a very cool toned green. I think it is so, so beautiful. Hang on a second, I will go get the yarn that I have for my next perfect little cardigan. Here it is. And <laughs> yeah, who would have thought? I am all into the grays, the blacks, the whites, the brownish neutral tones 
back yet. Now I have a red cardigan. I am working on a very green cardigan. And my next one is going to be this. It's called Fuchsia. Uh, it is a almost purplish pink, which is definitely not my color. I never liked anything purple, but I think I can pull it off. I hope I can because I really love this color. I just fell head over heels in love with it when I saw it. It is a friend of mine who is selling it here in Denmark. Her name is Kirsten. She's also the tech editor for all of these new patterns that are coming out. She also sells these uh, yarns that are GOTS certified, which basically means that every part of the process of creating these yarns is ethical. Uh, it is ethically sourced. It is, uh, there are rules for how the animals should be treated, how the people involved in the process should be treated. And it is all the way from the fiber to the finished dyed yarn. So, um, yeah. Also, this is kind of a budget-friendly yarn. This is not an expensive yarn, and it is just so beautiful. It's called Loch Lomond, and it is a 100% wool. It doesn't specify what type of fiber, but it is this uh, rustic, scrumptious, beautiful yarn. It, it must be dyed on a uh, natural color uh, because you have this you have this color change going on which i really really love my camera is not working with me today i apologize but yeah the Loch Lomond from bc gone i have no idea if you can get it outside of denmark i hope you can because it is a beautiful yarn, yarn that I am so excited to be working with. But I'm not casting this one on before I finish the green one that I'm working on. It shouldn't take me too long, depending on how many other projects that are going to take my attention in the coming weeks. My other active whip is in one of my many beautiful bags from Knitwear by Maki. I love her bags. She always has the best fabrics and her bags are so well made. Oh, and in this is my comfort knitting. Of course, I couldn't not take my comfort knitting as my plain knitting. Um, let's see how well I can show you this. Ah, kind of well. I am getting close to the sleeve separation on this one. This is my Christmas Day cast on, my CDCO 23. So my Christmas Day cast on from last year. Uh, it is, originally it was a sweater in a sport weight yarn with this uh, mock turtleneck and uh, long ripped uh, tight fitting sleeves. I am knitting this in a much lighter yarn that the pattern calls for. So I'm getting this very airy and light fabric. I am gonna uh, make it short sleeved so that it will be appropriate for the summer. And then probably come fall, I am going to pick out the bind off and knit the sleeves longer. That, that's what I see happening because I think this is going to be a favorite. Like one of those pieces that you just, yeah, always throw on just because it is so nice to wear. I have knitted another version also in a light yarn I knitted in, in this whole super soft, which is quite fine. Uh, so I went up one or two sizes in the pattern and knit myself a uh, short sleeved t-shirt 
using that. And I was so happy with the result that I thought, I need to do that again. I often do that. Uh, I rarely use the yarn recommended in the pattern, whether I'm knitting my own pattern or someone else's. I rarely use the recommended yarn. I always use what I have or what I fall in love with, and then I make it work. Uh, obviously, you can't take a bulky weight pattern and knit it up with a fingering weight. Maybe you could. I wouldn't try. I wouldn't dare it. But going from sport weight to fingering, that is absolutely no problem. You just make yourself a swatch to determine how many uh, stitches are you going to need around your bust. And then you pick the size and the pattern that has as close as possible to the amount of stitches that you want and you just go ahead. So yeah, also what I did for this one and this yarn. See, this, this is one of those where it's not the recommended yarn. It's not even close to the recommended yarn uh, when it comes to yarn weight, but I had to use it. It is the Ito Sensei Shimo. Of course, I don't have a ball band because I only have uh, the two cones that I brought on the plane. The rest of the cones in my suitcase. But let's not talk about that suitcase. Um, I have these two cones, so I'll be good for a little while. Come on, focus. It is such a beautiful yarn. It is wool and silk. And it is uh, woolen spun, which means that it is, when, when a yarn is woolen spun, so much more air is trapped in the yarn than uh, compared to a worsted spun, which is much tighter. So, um, yeah, I am loving a good woolen spun. I am loving the airy yarns. I love a yarn that carries carries itself well it's not too heavy often when you have a silk blend it can tend to get quite heavy because silk is a heavy and very smooth fiber so you can get a lot of drape which can be beautiful for certain projects but i am really enjoying how i get the silk content in this yarn without the heaviness and the drape I attribute that to the fact that it is woolen spun and also that it is a non-superwash. So the wool still has just a little bit of toothiness. So yeah, my comfort knitting, the knitting that I, I'm actually being a little bit careful not to knit too much on it because I'm enjoying it so much. It's a pattern I love. It's a yarn that I love. The two work together so very well. I use this in the mornings for my knitting and reading because it's mainly stocking at stitch in the round. Of course, you have to do ribbing on the sleeves. Oh yeah. In the pattern, uh, I instruct to do a a half twisted rib uh, knitting the knit stitches through the back loop. I have done that on the other two versions of this sweater that I have. For this one, I'm doing a regular rib just to see how that is going to work. And I must say, I am loving it. Uh, I know that the half twisted rib, it just looks so neat and so crisp. But I really think that the regular one by one ribbing it has its properties and I am enjoying it a lot. So, uh, yep, very much a project that I am so happy to be working on. See, I already told you that I'm going to be leaving very, very soon. I am going to be going on a cruise. I mentioned it last week as well. I am taking my youngest son and 
his family on a cruise to celebrate my 60th birthday, which is coming up in November. It's never too soon to start celebrating. After the cruise, we are continuing on up to Paris to go to Disneyland, which is in celebration of my granddaughter's birthday. <clears throat> it's a present she got from her dad that we would all go to Disneyland to celebrate her. So we're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to do so many exciting things. And I, of course, need to sort out my knitting to bring. I already decided which crochet project I am going to be bringing. I will be bringing this amazing t-shirt. Isn't it a polo, I should call it? Isn't it just absolutely amazing? I love this pattern. Uh, it is made up uh, from hexagons and half hexagons. And uh, so, so everything is made in pieces that are then uh, crocheted together as as you finish them which means that these little pieces are going to be perfect projects for lounging at the pool and also for waiting in line in disneyland all these places where you want something small portable really easy to bring with you so i have packed in another <laughs> project bag from Knitwear by Maki. I love her little sock bags. I think they're so cute and they hold a bit more than uh, than many of my other sock bags. So in here I have some cotton, some totally irregular cotton. This one is called Rio, but I mean any 8-4 cotton will work for this pattern and a crochet hook i have chosen a three millimeter she does recommend a 2.5 but i'm gonna try it with the three millimeter just to to see uh she does have two sizes in the pattern and the way she's doing the sizing is making each hexagon a little smaller or larger so i'm thinking i'm gonna Rip up a hexagon and see what the size of it will be. Compare it to the sizes in the pattern. And then I'm going to also bring uh, a smaller hook just to be on the safe side if I actually need to size down. But yeah, this is, this is something that I am really looking forward to working on. These hexagons, of course, the first couple of ones are going to be just a little bit, I'll have to be paying some attention, but I am sure after that, they're just going to fly by, much like if I was working up granny squares. They're not complicated, or they seem to be not complicated. Let me just, because I haven't done any of them yet. But yeah, this is my plan. I am going to be making hexagons for this beautiful shirt. I think that... I will substitute in a knitted collar rather than the crocheted collar just because I don't have the best experiences with getting my crochet to lay completely flat. So I think I'm just going to pick up stitches and uh, do a double knit uh, polo collar. I think that's going to be absolutely beautiful. Probably also the bottom bands i'm i'm also going to knit those i think maybe and I, this is going out on a limb because i am not an experienced crocheter i should not be modifying patterns yet but i would really like to um to change it from a a full shirt to just a polo so so it would only be open up here I don't know that I could do that, but you know what? I can try. I can always try. And again, it is crochet. If it doesn't work, this is worked in pieces. It's going to be one or two pieces that I'll have to rip back. That's going to be 
absolutely fine. I'm also going to need some knitting to bring. Something relatively mindless, something that I can just sit and work on, uh, yeah, whenever. <laughs> something, yeah, really easy. And I will say, both of these projects would actually be good for this. The thing is, yeah, let's, let's take this one first, my uh, perfect little cardigan. It does take up quite a lot of space. And also, I only have one and a half ball of the yarn until my suitcase arrives. But even with the suitcase arriving, it is going to take up quite a lot of space. It is a DK weight and the yarn and the whole project I have knitted, I have knitted so far that it it's it will take up suitcase space that I don't have for this trip. The Ito Sensei Christmas Day cast on would be perfect. It is small, uh, even though I have worked it almost to, to the point of sleep separation. It's still such a light fabric. The problem is, well, first, the yarn is in my suitcase, but let's not talk about that. But second, even if it comes, it's going to be on cones and cones just take up a little more space. So I'm going to have to decide if I want to rewind some cones into cakes and bring this. Or if I'll cast on something new. The beauty of casting on something new is that I'm not going to bring something that I already knit. I am going to start from scratch, which means less bulk. I have to fit all of my projects into my carry-on. We have very limited suitcase space on this trip. So, um, yeah, it's not going to fit in there. It's everything is going to go into my carry-on. So it shouldn't be a bulky project. But I'll figure something out. And I know that whatever I bring, it is going to bring me joy. I love my knitting and my crochet. It's where I recenter. It is where I where I retreat to uh, calm and soothe myself and revitalize myself so that I am ready to go back out into the world after. So yeah, of course I'm bringing something. I think that was it for the creative content this week. Uh, two finished objects, two almost ready to publish patterns, two whips, and yeah, one new cast on. Probably there's gonna be a second, just to keep the rhythm and keep everything symmetrical and neat. Let's just say two new cast ons. Life in general, um, yeah, saying goodbye is never fun. But the nice thing about these goodbyes is there's always a hello waiting at the other end. So we said our goodbyes over in Texas. Fortunately, they were going to go on a uh, small family vacation in Fort Lauderdale. So they were really excited about that. But still, um, the kids were not too happy with us leaving. But we're going to see them again soon. They're going to come to Denmark for the summer. The flight home was horrible. I mean, when we flew over there, it was one of those seamless flights where everything just fell into place and it was effortless. It was so easy. Coming back was different. Our flight out of Dallas was delayed more than an hour. Uh, first, we we boarded an hour late and then we spent almost another hour just sitting in the tarmac. 
So of course we flew in late to London, which meant that they had rebooked us. They had done that before we even touched down. They had already made the arrangements to rebook us, which was really, really nice. We were flying in late afternoon. We were tired. Uh, they had rebooked us uh, to the last flight from London Heathrow to Copenhagen that day. And because we kept running later and later, it was tight. We, we were running through the airport. Fortunately, people were being very, very helpful. So we were able to get through security pretty fast. We ran up to the gate. At the gate, we received our boarding passes and they assured us because I was like, our bags are not going to make it, are they? Oh yeah, the bags are going to make it. Um, of course they didn't make it. And it would have been nice to know because not knowing meant that we had to stay in the airport in Copenhagen until all the bags cleared from that flight and then go fill out a report uh, that our bags, of course, were missing. But yeah, there you go. We were home around 11 at night, which uh, we were so tired. Uh, yesterday, we spent time with our son and his family, and we started to prepare for a plan B if our suitcases didn't arrive. Did we even have clothes enough that we could pack another set of suitcases to go on the cruise? Fortunately, two of our suitcases arrived yesterday. So now we're only waiting for the most important one, the one with all of the yarn, with my huge set of traveling needles. I have a set of needles at home also, but I have this huge set of needles that I always travel with. I cannot lose those. Uh, that suitcase also holds most of Peter's clothes. Bummer for him. But uh, we're hoping for it to show up today. Today we're going to hang out with some friends. Tonight our granddaughter is coming to spend the night. And tomorrow will be a full day. Our grandson, we will be celebrating his birthday. And then later my mom is moving house, so we're going to go there to help her. And yeah, Sunday morning at four. Again, four o'clock is not morning. It's the middle of the night. But regardless, that's where we will be leaving. So, hmm, <laughs> yeah. I should probably go uh, and start to pack some of my things before everything starts rolling. I really hope that I will have time to edit this podcast before we leave. If not, I'm going to edit it on the plane going to France, probably. But I will do my best to make it come out in time. Next week, there's not going to be a podcast. I do not see myself uh, recording as we are on this family cruise. It's it's a tight schedule, so I don't want to stress myself. Um, I will much rather come back at you in two weeks with a lot of fresh new knitting and crochet to share. Until we talk again, stay happy, stay safe and keep crafting.